Hi and welcome to another video. In this one I'll give you a brief overview of schizophrenia. So I'll be talking about the background information to be aware of, the underlying pathophysiology, the four main types of schizophrenia you should be aware of, the first and second run symptoms that you should be able to recognize, as well as how to manage schizophrenia. So starting with some background information. Schizophrenia is a mental illness where there is a withdrawal from and the mis misinterpretation of reality and personal relationships. It affects almost 700,000 people in the UK. There are no clear causes of schizophrenia. There are predisposing factors such as previously mentioned genetics. Um, however, childhood abuse or substance misuse um, can also influence this. Now for a brief overview of the pathophysiology. Essentially, there is a dopamine excess in the brain or an excess stimulation of the mesolimbic pathway, which is a dopaminergic pathway. The dopaminergic neurons within this pathway project to the limbic system, which typically focuses on emotions and behavior. With this excess stimulation, there are positive symptoms which form, which includes delusions, hallucinations, changes in motor behavior, etc. When we use antipsychotics, we try and block parts of these pathways in order to stop these symptoms from happening. However, this also causes side effects to occur. There is a video on antipsychotics I will link down below that I have created, which goes into the different pathways and the underlying pharmacology a bit more. The four main types of schizophrenia to be aware of. First one being paranoid, which typically presents with delusions, hallucinations and odd behavior. The other one is hebephrenic, which is usually characterized by earlier onsets, so in younger patients. And the main issue is with disorganized thoughts and inappropriate affect. So in those patients, when they try and communicate, uh, what comes over the mouth is often nonsensical and doesn't really follow um, a typical sentence structure. And unfortunately, it is the schizophrenia type which carries the worst, worst prognosis out of the four I'll mention today. Catatonic schizophrenia is presenting with rigidity, posturism and stupor. And therefore, the symptoms are typically physical. So the patients are able to sit still in one position for hours. Um, they lack facial expressions and they are not very talkative. Lastly, there is residual schizophrenia, which typically presents with one year of negative symptoms and is preceded by a clear psychotic episode in the past. In terms of clinical presentation, I will talk about first and second rank symptoms. So the first rank symptoms are often called Schneider's first rank symptoms. And those include auditory hallucinations and specifically third person auditory hallucinations. And those are typically a uh, running commentary of what the patient is currently doing. Thought disorders may be present. So that includes thoughts insertion, withdrawal or broadcasting. Passivity phenomena may be uh, observed, which uh, means that the patient feels like their actions, emotions or feelings are controlled by an external force. And you may have delusional perceptions where a patient misinterprets a real perception um, and there's no logic behind it. So, for example, a patient will be driving a car um, and the light turns red and they interpret it as, for example, the, the aliens are coming to invade the city later this afternoon. So no logic can be followed from the way um, they interpret the real perception. Second round symptoms includes disorganized thoughts, negative symptoms, which includes lack of motivation, a social behavior, poverty of speech or flattened affect. There can be changes in behavior and catatonic symptoms may be present, which includes impaired communication or unusual movement or the lack of movement. However, importantly, Symptoms must be present for at least one month before a diagnosis can be made. However, only one first rank symptom is needed in order for the diagnosis to be made as long as it's been present for at least a month. 
In terms of the management, it includes therapy, social support, and antipsychotics. The first line management is second generation antipsychotics or so-called atypical antipsychotics, which includes risperidone and iropiprazole. The second line management would include the first generation antipsychotics or the typical antipsychotics such as haloperidol or prochlorperazine. In patients who have tried multiple types of um, the first or second line management and see no improvement of symptoms, um, you can try clozapine, which is typically um, for the so-called drug-resistant schizophrenia, and it is also a type of a, um, a second-generation antipsychotic. Lastly, I would like to discuss some of the poor prognostic factors for psychosis or schizophrenia. Gradual onset, low IQ, prodromal phase of social withdrawal, and strong family history indicate that the patient might have a poorer prognosis compared to someone who has none or fewer of these factors. This was a brief overview of schizophrenia. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I hope you consider subscribing.